Hello again, everybody. This is Don Young from So Young Designs, and we're back here for another quick tutorial. I have a class I have to teach tomorrow to our local Destiny Club at our uh, quilt shop. We do a once a month Destiny Club meeting, and then we ask everybody what did, would they like to learn about their machine. And I had a lot of people ask me, well, I had this pen hanging off the side of my machine. What do I do with it? So I watched some different videos and looked, read through the manual and looked at different things and then I figured, hell, you know, we can figure out what it does and how it works and how we can use it. And so that's sort of like what we're gonna go through today. So when you get your machine turned on, set up for sewing, um, we wanna, first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna calibrate the sensor pen. So to calibrate the sensor pen, you gotta go up here to the, the uh, settings pages and you're gonna to go to the middle tab, which will take you to page four, and then you just go over to page five. All the way down to the bottom is, this, is the sensor function calibration. So I'm assuming that everybody already has their uh, pens installed on the side of their machines. If you don't, there's a quick instructions in the manual on how to do that. So what we're gonna to do to calibrate is we're gonna take our pen, which you can, as you may know, you may not know, you can also use it as a stylus on your screen. So on page five of nine, down here in the bottom, we got a plus under the sensor function calibration. We're gonna hit that plus, and it says okay to automatically lower the presser foot, which say okay. And then what it's gonna do is says touch the first point using the sensor pin as indicated. It doesn't mean to touch here on the screen, we need to actually touch over here in the machine into the sensor area. The key thing is, is that you wanna be able to hold the pin like you always hold the pen. So if you hold it like this, with it straight up and down, calibrate it that way. If you're left-handed, calibrate it left-handed. If you're right-handed and you wanna hold at a 45 degree angle, or if you like holding it this way, whichever way feels comfortable, just remember you gotta be able to get the pen in here, into this work area. So doing it like this might be difficult. So figure out what's comfortable for you, play around with it a few times, and once you figure out what you want, go to your calibration. So it's ready to touch the first point. If you look here, it's pointing to number one, which is right on the needle, I mean the cover plate for the bobbin here, this plastic plate. There's a little dot right in the middle. So that's where it wants you to touch. So I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna do a quick touch. I don't know if you heard it on my machine, but it beeped and then the number one turned red. Now it says touch the second point using the sensor pin as indicated. The second point is this green little cross right here with a green dot in the middle. That's the second point. So we want to touch there, and it beeped and also gave me the indication. I can reset it and do it again. I can go ahead and just do it again. Touch it one, touch two. I can do this two or three times until I feel like I'm doing it the same every single time. Once I'm happy with it, I can hit OK. This is now calibrated for me and how I hold it. My wife, she'll have to calibrate it to her. So if she's used the pen and I come on and I'm gonna use the pen, I always go to the calibration and calibrate it to me. So that takes care of the calibration. So what we're gonna do is in these utility stitches and decorative stitches, we have different options. So right now I am just gonna choose, I got 103, which is a single straight uh, run stitch. And what we're gonna do is that we can use the sensor pen to do a couple of different things. I got a piece of muslin here, just scrap fabric that we can mess with. So over here, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, there's the sensor pen icon. So if I click on the sensor pen icon, it's gonna bring up four different options. One of them is grayed out. The one that is grayed out is the one for setting width. The reason that is grayed out is because a single run stitch doesn't have any width. It has length, but it doesn't have width. A zigzag stitch will have width. So because of that, that option is not available, but that's fine. First one here is the guide beam. The next one, next one here is the uh, needle position, then the width, and then the end point. So let's go to the guide beam. When I turn on the guide beam, I don't know if you can see over my machine, but the guide beam is in the center needle position and it's flashing. So right now, if I had, let's say you can barely see it, there's a fold line, a crease line right on this fabric. So if I set that fabric right there and I want that beam on that line, all I gotta do is I can't touch here, it doesn't do me any good. I come over here and I touch that. And it moved my guide beam exactly right there. 
So pretend I have a row of stitches there and I want to be this, the next set of stitches to be right alongside of it. I can set my guide beam to there. Once I set it, it moved over and it indicates where it's at and then I can hit OK. I can also touch again and it'll continue to move, touch again, it'll continue to move and set it to where I think exactly where I want it to be. And that's pretty good right there. And I go ahead and hit OK. I still have the option to move it. Right now it's at 11.5. If I hit the plus key, it's going to go to 12. It's going to move it 0.5 millimeters. So if I'm just a little bit off and I want to move it over a little bit, I can just touch it one time. And that's exactly where I want to be. So that is basically the function on that. A lot of times I don't use a sensor pen for that. I'll just slide it over and move it where I want it to go. But it's nice with the pen because you can just grab it real quick, touch it, and you're done. So that's the first one, which is the, uh, the guide beam. So now the second one, so if I go back into my settings again, and I go into here, what it's going to do is says touch the needle position with the sensor pen. So if my fabric is sitting here. This function cannot be used while the sensor is in this mode. So it won't let me drop the foot. So while my fabric is sitting here, I want to set the needle. Right now it's center. I want to make it go just a little bit off the of center to right there where I want the center of that stitch to be. The guide beam moved over and continues to flash, but the needle has not moved. When I hit OK, the guide beam went back to where it originally was, because I set it in the guide beam, and the needle moved over to where I wanted it to go. It's the same thing as doing left and right shift here. I can move the needle 0.25 at a time. So that's it. 0.25 millimeters with every push. So if I want to make fine adjustments, I can do that. It just allows you to touch a specific point on your stitch where you want the needle to line up on. So that is that function there. So guide beam, needle selection, and then stitch width. So this one here, we are going to take a zigzag stitch and we are going to make it oops, right at the default. Now we're going to set the width of the stitch. So I'm going to go to the sensor pen. Now this one is grayed out, which is where the needle is because it's going to move back and forth. It's not staying in a centered position. And I get this option now, which is my width. When I touch it, it's going to tell me, again, my, my guide beam is flashing, touch the first point of the stitch with using the sensor pen. It wants you to touch on the right side of the needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along here and I'm going to touch right there and it's going to set my guide beam right where I touched. Okay, you have to come over here and push OK to set that point. So I'm going to push OK. Now it says touch the second point of the stitch with using the sensor pin, which is now on the left side. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to touch that side. And then I'm going to set it to OK. My guide beam goes back to where I originally had it set when we did the first step. And now it has set my stitch width to seven millimeters. So now when I drop my presser foot down, let's see if I can get in here. And I'll start to do a seven millimeter wide stitch at 2.5 millimeters long. And you can see right there, that's what it started to do. So it set that all up by itself. So that's how you set the width on that. The last one is a really cool one. This is the end point. And the end point comes into play when you're in decorative stitches. So I'm going into uh, decorative stitches. We're going to number six. And I'm going to pick the, this one right here with the triangles. And I can go into my sensor pen. You can see that my length and my width are grayed out. I can't set them. I can't set them here either. That stitch is set and designed to be at that width and that length. So that's fine. What we're going to do is I am going to go ahead and I want to go ahead and start stitching. So I'm stitching this along. And let's say I've been doing a really long stitch. When you get to within about three inches, which is right about where that sensor point, green point was, when you get within this distance of your end point, 
you can come to here and you can set your endpoint. And what that does, try and see if I got a pen here to mark with or something. Yeah, I'll use a Sharpie. So what that does is let's say this point right here is my uh, end point. And that's where I want my stitches to end. So what this is telling me is touch the ending point using the sensor pen. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to touch that point. Touch the ending point using the sensor pen. It's telling me that it's 2.46 or 62.5 millimeters from the needle. Down here at the bottom, there's two different options. One shows the pattern completed, the other one shows the pattern in half. This is telling the machine, I want to end at that point and I want to end on a complete pattern. I want you to end the pattern exactly at that point. So as you're stitching along, it'll adjust the stitch length to make sure that that pattern ends right where it's supposed to be. It won't be doing a bunch of tulips or whatever, and then the last three are really, really skinny. It'll figure out what it needs to take off of each one and adjust to that point. So touch the ending point using the sensor pen. So we set that, and then we hit OK. The machine will sew to the end point in one step if the length is less than 70 millimeters or 2.3 two and three quarter inches. The machine may not stop at the ending point. So let's sew along and just see what happens here. Oops, I've got to hit okay and acknowledge that. So let's go ahead and keep sewing along here. And this is a great function when you're doing the class that I'm doing tonight or tomorrow is crazy quilt blocks. So you want to do motifs on every little section of a crazy quilt block. So let's see, we're getting close to our point. Let's see what happens here. See, it's, the machine stopped on itself. I still got the, the pedal down. And it looks like I'm about two millimeters over my line. So it could be I'm not calibrated good, it could be that stitch, it could be just about anything. So let's try it again with a different stitch and see what we can get. Let's do, um, let's try this one, a nice big stitch, and we'll see what happens here. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop it down and... This is going to have sideways, sideways movement as well as forward movement. So this guide beam is really critical because it will help you to keep the guide beam parallel to the other stitches or parallel to another seam line or whatever so you can stay straight. So let's get to here and we're going to hit sensor pan, we're going to hit end and then I'm going to touch, right? there and tell it that's where I want in 1.3 inches and I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK to acknowledge that and see what happens. Now if you touch further back here and you got a longer run then there's a uh, option that will come up as it stitches for a while it will stop and it'll say let's reconfirm that ending point and it'll ask you to touch that point again. That's why it's a good idea to mark that point with a friction pen or chalk or something that you can be able to hit that exact point again. And that'll help you line up. So this is going to stop right about where I clicked. I didn't mark it, but I kind of eyeballed where it was at. And you can see right there, it finished it right exactly at the end of that stitch. So it adjusted what it needed to adjust to make it all in there. So that's basically, in a nutshell, how to use the sensor pen. So I'm going to do the class tomorrow, and then after the class, I'll probably do a, uh, another quick video to add to this one, and then I'll put it all together and get it posted out there. If you have any questions or any uh, comments or anything, please comment on uh, my Facebook page at So Young Designs or on my YouTube channel at So Young Designs. This video will be uploaded to both. I'll also upload to the uh, Baby Lock Destiny group on Facebook. And I also have written instructions for this tutorial, and I'll post them up there as well. 
so you can follow along with a written tutorial, which is basically just summarizing what's in the manual. I just basically read the manual, summarized it, and put down some basic steps that kind of explain it in short, quick little sentences to help you remember how to do this. The best thing to do is to make a crazy quilt block, pick a bunch of different motifs, and go stitch away at it. And have fun with it, and practice with it, and you'll get to see what it can do. And who knows, you might be able to find a, a really good use to use the sensor pen. So again, thank you very much, and I appreciate it.